Good morning. I am out here today at the barn with my girls. With my girl. I'm going to show you, because this was requested, how I milk and my milking routine. I will throw out a disclaimer here. I'm new to this. Cows were never something I thought or envisioned myself having. Now that I do, it's one of those things where I'm like, why didn't I do this sooner? I'm not gonna lie, probably it was more because I was intimidated by their size and the amount of milk they give, but um, I'm quickly realizing I probably am not getting enough milk, especially when you're gonna get into things like cheese. She gives us a gallon, about a gallon to a gallon and a half a day and she's still nursing her calf, which I've talked to some other farmers and they're gonna help get us some stuff and kind of get us on track with weaning. But if you're gonna make cheese, you need a lot of milk. <laughs> so quickly realizing that the amount of milk they give is doable. I also realize you have to have the right cow. If you don't have the right cow for you, you're not going to enjoy it. Those are kind of my lessons I've learned. So as far as feeding her, she's on grass all the time, 24-7. I do supplement her with some hay. Um, she gets it at milking and I give her a couple flakes in the evening. I feed her um, a half and half mix of alfalfa pellets and a loose grain. The ingredients are literally, I think, molasses and then the different grains. It's not pelleted. It's not um, super processed. It's just the grain. And then, as you can see, that's what it looks like. And then I, I will soak it overnight in some water and some apple cider vinegar that helps aid in absorption and digestion. And then I'll sprinkle a mixture of baking soda and kelp over it as well um, for minerals and just to kind of help keep her um, from getting bloated. So that's what I feed. Maple also gets this as well. We in my goats. I also feed this to goats because it's an all um, stock feed. So I saw on a lot of um, Facebook pages and forums where people were concerned about overfeeding grain while they're milking because you want the cow to stand still and one way to get them to stand still is to eat. So I found that if I just give her a scoop of what I just showed you, she gets one scoop of that. I give it to her in the morning and the evening, but I found if I keep hay below where she's eating, she'll move on after the grain's done and she'll eat the hay and that keeps her occupied. That works for us and then it keeps us from having to feed a ton of grain and it keeps my feed costs down because hay here for us is pretty cheap. We pay $4 a square bale. So if I can feed her more hay over grain, I would rather do that. So I just kick it up and pile it up for her and then she'll have that there. One reason why I am supplementing with grain and making sure she gets extra hay is we were told she's pregnant and I don't know I might have saw might have seen a sign of heat I don't know if that was a hundred percent what I was seeing I took some pictures and some other people said it, it's possible it could have been so I'm a few days away from seeing if she's gonna go and have that symptom again if she does, then there's the likelihood of her being pregnant is very low. That being said, if she is, I want to make sure she's getting enough to supply us in milk, supply this this calf I've got to wean, and um, that baby and herself. She needs 
nutrition as well. Now, Maple is, from what we're told, she's about six months old now. So she is at a good time to wean. So it's not like we've got a year old calf on her. When Ruthie came to us, though, she was a little bit on the skinny side. So that's one reason. He said she just had her out in a pasture eating grass, which is fine. That's what they're designed to do. But knowing that she's going to be our family milk cow, she's feeding a baby and possibly growing one, I wanted to make sure she was getting what her body needed. I know. You want to come in. You was upset that I was talking. <laughs> come on, lady. Oh, you rain too fast. Rain too fast. She is excited and it only took her really a few days to get into this routine. Um, Cause like I said, the guy that had her before, he was not milking her. Maple is her second calf. And um, the pregnancy before Maple, she was being milked. But see, I have her hay kind of piled up here and she'll munch on that when she's done with her grain. Now you can put free choice minerals out, which I am totally gonna do. That is a huge help to their condition, their coat. All I just I haven't haven't got that far. But she is a jersey and it's not uncommon to see bones. I I personally would like to see her with a little more weight on, which is why I supplement with the grain and the next I'm going to clean her teats off. What I have here is warm soapy water and melaleuca or tea tree oil in it utter really well i try not to touch a different tea with the same spot and clean her so if the camera is a little wobbly i'm sorry and then i just wipe around the whole top of the udder and I find that this gets any hay or um, hay, loose hairs off to dry her off with. And now she's clean. If you're pale, you have to clean out the tea. Milk and bacteria will sit in here. That is your highest source of contamination. If you are going to have a contamination, which is still pretty slim, if you are though, it's going to be because you didn't clean, you didn't squirt out the teats or strip them. I think the ter correct term is stripping. Like I said, all this is totally new to me. Um, it's basically the same concept as goat. I find that it took me the same amount of time to completely milk her out as it did the goat, which is so crazy. Easy, mama. All right, next you want to strip out the milk. You don't want to leave any in the teeth best practice um, always 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 strip out the teeth you don't want to leave milk sitting in there that opens them up to mastitis plus this is where all the cream lies so you want to make sure <laughs> you're getting all that good cream more milk you leave the higher your risk for mastitis becomes and you do not want a cow with mastitis going that extra step for her see nothing's nothing's coming out now And we have a pail full of milk.
and just clean her off again. You can see how loose her udder is. Whole udder, and then you have each quarter, four quarters, and then you have each teat. And then this is what's called a, I believe a blind quarter is the correct name for it. It's not dead by any means. It's just not producing any milk right now. It is possible she had mastitis in it and it stopped producing. I've noticed though, baby favors this one and this one when she nurses. She hardly touches this back one and it's not producing nearly as, not, as much as these two do. So I think more supply and demand. Baby wasn't really nursing off of it, but could have been she wasn't nursing on it because she did have mastitis as well. All right, mama, you ready to go out in the field? Back on up. <laughs> Get every last bit of hay. Such a good girl. Good girl. <laughs> I'll let her out in a minute. Not much to it. You just have to find your routine. Having a cow that you get along with <laughs> most certainly helps. If I had to fight her every day to milk her, I think I would go crazy. He is just so easy and so sweet and easy to please. Baby on the other hand, <laughs> she's a baby and we're getting there. We'll, we'll get her trained up real good, but I hope you found this helpful and um, hope you found something you could take away from it. Maybe it will kind of help cement that decision down for you. It's, I don't feel like I'm tied down to anything. I don't feel like this um, keeps me from anything. Sometimes that's a concern when you have a dairy animal that you've got to spend every single day with. Um, it can get to feel like you're tied down, but I don't feel that way at all. We are by nature home bodies. And I really do think calf sharing helps a lot with that. Sunday mornings for us are really busy days and I just haven't been able to fit milking into that routine. So it's nice that the baby's here and um, she can nurse on her and I don't have to worry about that. Now, within the next week or two, I'm going to buckle down and get serious and find that routine. But for now, that's one of the, the positives of calf sharing is if something were to come up or like she was dirty the other day, I didn't want to waste the milk, it can go to the baby. But Overall, I don't feel like it's something that takes away from my daily life. I look forward to it every day. I love spending time with her. I love the quiet time in the barn. Uh, I love having the fresh milk. So, yeah, it's overall been a great addition to the homestead. Thing to note too, I don't let Mabel out right away. I let Mama just kind of rest and sit from being milked by me. Uh, usually my mother-in-law, I can text her and she'll come let her out or I'll just run over and let her out in like a couple hours. So Mabel's out for most of the day. She's basking in the sunshine and <laughs> frolicking in the field and taking naps in the shade. So it's safe to say she's a happy little cow. <laughs> Every evening I come over and I lock Mabel up in the barn at night. That way she's separated off of Ruthie and we have enough milk for in the morning. If not, she would have nursed all night long and there wouldn't be a lot for us. Maple's six months old, so she's at the age where this doesn't hinder her or hurt her at all. And then about an hour or two after I'm done milking Ruthie, someone will just come down to the barn and let her out. Thank you.
That's all right. I cracked it. So now that I'm home, I'm just straining my milk. Can I go feed this other one, Shaggy? Um, if he's outside. Grace is helping with eggs. Go ahead. He's in his cave. All right. His cave? Yeah. Now that I'm home, I'm just going to strain this milk. I'm straining it through a coffee filter. And then I will get it in the fridge to chill as soon as possible. This is just the coffee filter I use. I'm going to tackle this kitchen. Aaron is working hard um, and replacing some of our windows here in our mobile home, so I will have a video on that shortly. Thank you for watching. May the Lord bless and keep you until we meet again.